Welcome back to Wannabe, the podcast that takes you from where you are now to where you want to be in 30 minutes or less. I'm Imriel Morgan, founder of Content is Queen, a podcast agency and club for ambitious podcasters with phenomenal taste, high expectations and a desire to sound as good as I do now. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Wannabe's focus is to help you take consistent action to build a successful life and career in the creative and entertainment industry. Today, I am back with three inspiring guests who are going to help you understand why seeing is believing, to be more playful and curious, and how to start prioritizing yourself and your well-being. Let's get into it. Today's guest is actress Sharon Duncan Brewster, who is a familiar face to many Brits listening, I'm sure. Sharon is best known for her role as Crystal Gordon in Bad Girls and as Trina Johnson on EastEnders, but she's also had recurring roles in Top Boy and Sex Education. The focus of this interview is to help you find your place in the world and to carve out a lane that you can dominate. We also talk about taking back power in situations that you may find intimidating. Let's go. Who did you want to be before you became who you are today and why? To to start off with, I wanted to be a pharmacist. Really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's not what I expected. (laughs) I I saw saw this apparently, and I don't don't remember this. I remember saying it, but my mum said that I saw saw someone on the television. It was a documentary about a pharmaceutical or something or the other. And and I saw this this woman doing, I think she might have been counting up medication or something like this. And I said, mummy, what's she doing? She said, she's a pharmacist. What do they do? mum told me I said that's what I want to do and for years that was sort of like my man I want my mantra oh I want to be a pharmacist I want to be a pharmacist and then <laughs> when I got to secondary school yeah I sat down in my first chemistry class right <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I can relate <laughs> <laughs> I sat down in my first class eager happy you know so excited because this is it this is the beginning of the trip this is the adventure starting here and oh you know you you put it in your your you know you have a statement when you go from primary school to secondary school I would like to do this Mm -hmm. and you know this was it and so I sat in the class and the teacher started the the lesson when I tell you the class ended (laughs) I don't even know when everybody left all I know is I was still sat at the chair looking at the the blackboard at the time going oh no (laughs) <laughs> oh no because it just I did not get it I yeah. did um, and I tried hard I worked hard on that I, I had private classes the mom oh, wow. so, ever so kindly paid for somebody to come to teach me gosh I used to dread that class oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, but yeah sometimes you just need to face that you know you're good at some things and not very good at others I wasn't terrible but I it wasn't good enough to excel and and go on to further education with that but the, to be honest the acting always stole all my energies away anyway from such a small age so was it that you were in a theatre group were you in classes for that already so there was already yeah. an interest I used to go to a place called the Anna Shear Children's Theatre which was in Islington it's now called the Young People's Theatre. It's in Barnsbury in Islington. And I used to go there at the time you could go twice a week for an hour and a half. And the classes were 20 pence. Oh, wow. (laughs) 20 pence for an hour and a half. And it was, I loved it because my mum and dad sent me there because although I was at home singing and dancing and making up all kind of voices and doing impersonations <laughs> of politicians and apparently being good at it as soon as I left the house I was really quiet and shy and I still do have that shy energy about me in certain situations they sent me there just to try and get me out of, out of my shell because I was my mum's only child as the only child in my house growing up but they had the agency upstairs and as I got older you start to realize that they'd have visitors coming in and they'd have in in-house auditions as well and kids would be asked to go upstairs oh wow and and the deal is if you go upstairs then you get to be on tv or you can get to be on stage in the theater well I want to know what happens when you go upstairs and yeah. it wasn't like I was trying hard or anything but it was a curiosity of sorts and then by the time I was 16 it became very apparent that I really like acting I really yeah. enjoy it and and in my in my heart I was going I could actually really do this as a career because I was getting paid my careers officer was also my English 
teacher and she said, you still haven't filled in your UKPKAS form. Do you really want to go mm. to university? And I was like, I don't know, miss. I was there toying with the ideas of like doing psychology, criminal psychology or media design, graphic design, that sort of thing. But every time I just kept coming back to this acting, coming back to the acting. She said, you haven't filled the form in. I said, I know. She said, you don't want to go to university. I said, no, miss. She said, you want to act, don't you? I said, yes, miss. She said, well, you're already doing it. Do you think you need to go to drama school? Because I don't. I think you should just carry on. I think you're doing really well as it is. And and I tell you what, Miss Smith, if you're out there, thank you so much because I just needed somebody to give me the green light. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking you probably already invest a lot of time and energy into your skincare, healthcare and hair care. But what about your brain care? Why prioritise what's on your head over what's in your head? I was recently introduced to the Brain Care podcast, which is dedicated to helping you care for your most important organ. Hosted by Dan Murray Serta, co-founder of Height, a brain care company, you'll learn about how to optimise your brain health and mental well-being through a series of bite-sized interviews, all between just five and 15 minutes with the world's leading scientists and experts. Dan interviews brilliant brains like Stephen Fry, Jay Shetty, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee and Dame Kelly Holmes, to name a few. So go to your podcast player of choice. The one that you're listening to right now also works and search for brain care to start improving your brain today. We'll come back to Sharon in just a few minutes. I want you to get to know Opayemi Sofaluk, who is the lead regional manager of diversity and inclusion at Facebook. Opayemi has a few things to share that I think you'll 100% relate to. Take it away. My name is Opiemi Sofaluk, and I am the co-author of Twice As Hard, which comes out in the UK on the 3rd of June. I am also the lead regional diversity and inclusion program manager at Facebook. And in addition to that, I am also a mum and a wife. <laughs> so many hats that I have to put on. Some of the things I'm currently working on improving right now from a personal perspective is really tied to self-care. I've realised with all the many hats that I wear and the, the hats that I've listed, honestly, I find that every day I'm busy, 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 busy. And I rarely find time to just take that break or reflect. Every once in a while I go for a run and that really has been an outlet for me. But one of the things I've realised that I need to prioritise more is how I look after myself. Am I taking breaks? You know, how do I prioritise my self-care? So that's an area that I'm really trying to improve on, on a personal level. And I'm sure it's one that many can identify with in this busy kind of culture and world. There is that tendency to keep going or to push for more. But there, there is the need to ask yourself, am I rested? How do I feel? Do I need to take a break? Because in the long run, if we go, 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 while it's great to push for greatness, while it's great to work towards our goals, um, it's super, super important that we take time to relax and refresh ourselves and make sure that we are charged um, so that we can deliver our best. And then in terms of a book I would recommend, I would actually recommend Twice as Hard. And I'm not saying this just because it's my book, but because I believe it is a really, really powerful book, which will educate educate, empower, inform the black community on ways to really achieve success. But it also will help allies to understand some of the things we go through in the working world and in the world of business. Yes, to taking breaks and prioritizing yourself. I can 100% relate to that. I have also been reading her book twice as hard. And I am very grateful that this book exists as a blueprint for us to navigate our careers in the UK in particular. You can now find it in all major bookstores. And a heads up that we have got her husband, Raphael Sofaluk, joining us on the podcast very soon. So stay tuned for that. Now back to Sharon. With acting, it requires so much vulnerability and openness to do things on screen that for any ordinary person living their life existing <laughs> would just be like, I could not. I would love to know how you how you tackle that. I totally agree with you. We have so many vul vulnerable moments. We have so many vulnerable moments as 
creatives by allowing yourself to be vulnerable that's when the exciting stuff comes out and yeah there have been scenarios where I've been asked to do things that I haven't felt comfortable with as a as an actor Mm -hmm. where I think where inexperience has made me force myself to do it and in some situations the outcome has been it's been okay I think there are now things that I know I definitely wouldn't want to do and would feel feel very confident about saying it straight away in the moment, be it on set or in rehearsals or whatever. Uh-huh. But there is still something about, you know, that old cliche, feeling the fear and, and, and doing it anyway. Even a change in habit. For example, okay, when I get out of bed, the first thing I do is this. What would happen to your day if you just stepped right instead of left? Mm. If you got out of the bed on a different side, you know, some people argue, well, there's a wall there, so I ain't going to do it. What happens if you crawl out, <laughs> crawl out at the foot of the bed, jump, jump out of bed? I don't know, don't bust your head on the ceiling or anything. But, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Just, just to switch it up a little piece and just to only, you know, by slight slight you know fragments of of change just fragments of change that's not what I mean I mean sort of very very minute turns on the dial if you know what I'm saying just to see what happens and rather than try to be in control all the time as well I think that's where artistry really starts to show itself because when we are in control it normally means that we're guarded it normally means that we're holding something back the moment you start to op- allow yourself to be open, there are some scenarios where it's really healthy to push yourself and do it. And yes, true say, there are some st- scenarios where people are just taking a piss. Yeah. And in those moments when your gut instinct is no, 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 stick with that, I would say, for sure. Okay. Because normally when that alarm bell is going off, it's, it's not discomfort it's a different sort of a reaction and response. And, and when that happens, the safest thing to say is in the moment, I'm not comfortable here. And yeah. then what, what follows can be a conversation where you can think about it as you're talking. You know, it's not like you're spouting, you know, straight, you know, making decisions straight away. But from that, people can respect that you've, you've vocalised it and they should then engage in a conversation about what's going on and they should listen and I think in in a scenario where in a world where sometimes people say well there's sometimes there's not enough time and I felt like you know I was new to the profession and I didn't know what was right if it what was the norm I would say this any employer director producer who hears somebody say I'm not comfortable should respect that and do something to make you feel comfortable. And if they've tried to do that and you're still not comfortable, then the answer is no. Yeah. I am not. I will not. I don't want to. It wasn't agreed and discussed before. Let me go on and do as we discussed. And hopefully that will be okay. Yeah. I think if if it goes beyond that, then you're in a very tricky situation and I I would say to any actor who's out there who feels like they have been in that scenario to just ask for a moment to talk you know with the director or producer if they're around and and hopefully come to an understanding about it but see sometimes I would also say prevention is better than cure so if you see something on on a script that you already don't feel comfortable about don't leave it to the last minute straight straight away get on it and talk to somebody, be it the producer, director. And if they're not willing to talk about it, then talk to your agent if you ha- are fortunate enough to have one. Yeah. But always vo- be vocal as much as you can. And if the only thing that can come out of your mouth is, I, I don't feel comfortable, that is a good way to start the dialogue. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for saying all of that, actually, and sharing that, because I think there is something, especially because the audience is largely women listening. Mm. It is a big thing to feel pressured or like you don't have a choice in certain situations and it doesn't need yeah. to be like these big extremes. But mm. it's, a, it's a spectrum of... Comfort sits on a spectrum in general. And yeah, that could yeah. be as simple as saying a line that 
could be seen as offensive or you know mm-hmm. trigger something in you emotionally <laughs> that you just like yeah. actually no people I know aren't like that I don't want to yeah. I don't want to play into that yeah. so I think yeah it's just acknowledging that you can say I'm not comfortable with that and like you said it doesn't need to be a final thing it's a conversation it could be yeah. so there's so yeah. many layers before we get to completely writing it off or but I think yeah there's exactly. something I definitely needed to hear that because I can be quite final in my way of thinking really? like it's very black and white there's no <laughs> shades of gray I'm just like the answer is yes or it's no <laughs> I think I think with, with regards to any any job description or any scenario there's always an explanation from where the person on the other side is coming from mm. and and I think in some scenarios they're wrong they to- they've got it they've got the wrong end of the stick they don't know what they're talking about and so therefore by you saying you're not comfortable then you can get in- open up a, a dialogue which is this is really how it is or this is it from my perspective whatever it be be it, if it's a, a line or I like, say for example I've had scenes where I've had to have like um, oh my character's just coming out of bed and so I've said Okay, have you got any uh, scarves, please? And everyone, they're looking at me like, uh, what, do you mean? What, what do you need a scarf for? <laughs> and yeah. this is a long time ago, yeah. So I think, people, I think the good thing is now people are starting to get onto that. They're, they're really tuning in now. People are making an effort, which is a good thing. But back in the day, they'd be like, why were I said, because she's just waking up. She's going to have a headscarf, a, mm-hmm. a, a scarf. And they're looking at you like a scarf. And no, 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 no. Can you not have this? We don't, um, the designer says that, you know, with the scarf, the, the way that the colours and everything, I said, listen, a black woman coming out of her bed, she got to have a head scarf on her right. head. It's otherwise, the, people it are just going really straight true. away, yeah. straight away, she ain't, she ain't come out of bed. That's just, Do you know what, I watched true. something up until a week ago and the girl came out of bed without a head scarf on and I was like, this Fresh. is unrealistic. This is unrealistic. It's just not true. <laughs> and literally, Fresh. it is like that though, because you're just like, that's just not true. She and would not have gone to just, bed. Like dispels everything and it ruins it ruins and i'm sorry there's a it certain does, it audience. Yanks you out, right yeah and there's a certain amount of audience sitting there going as you say yanked at going that's just no and rather than being pulled into the drama and, and the strength of this whatever individual's performance they're now sort of questioning not only that's not true but why did she not say something why did <laughs> what she letting the team down for you know there's all that stuff. so I don't think people realise how the the domino effect mm. of not being vocal has on society. From And this is the thing about have a certain duty that we have as performers to be truthful mm. and honest about who we are and where we come from. And a lot of the times it is difficult. It has been difficult. But I think we're now in a position with everything that's going on where people are... I don't know why it's taken this long and it's frustrating that it has yeah. and it's frustrating that it's taken the extent of what's occurred, especially over the last, what, seven years for, for things to, well, you know, there are these cycles of things that happen and our generations, it, it's, it's what's been going on over the last year in particular. But prior to that, we all know it was much further than that. For certain people to now step up and go, okay, I'm ready now, I, I, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. Right. And that we can go into the depths of and and, and that is a sit down, bus a drink open and, <laughs> and, 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 and chat conversation that goes on all day, a weeks with our lot because it's it's deep. But we have arrived at a point where people are saying, I want to know your truth. I want to know the truth. And that's really interesting. And and I'm glad it's happening. And what I now need to hear next is I want to know our truth mm. because I don't think people, some people are clicking, some yeah. people are, but it's important that we, and I say we being everybody, talk and listen to each other. Listening is key. It's, for sure. it's, it's so simple. Right. Um, in, as we say in words, talk and listen to each other. But I know a lot of people are tired of doing one action or the other. And I'm talking from both both sides of this very ble- inter- intersected fence that, you know, this this whatever, this this distance between us on one hand, the ways that we connect and the ways that we are so different. You still go, I understand you're tired. I know you are. And I know and I know you're hurting. I'm hurting. 
I'm not talking about any one person when I say this, and I really want to make it important that's understood because we all are tired in a way. And what am I saying? How can I say this, which will really convey what I mean from my heart? It's about the fact that tired has so many different connotations. Mm -hmm. And so we are all tired, but, but your tired comes from a very different place to my tired. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. Right. So, and yeah, you might be hurting, but I'm also hurting too. Yeah. And the extent of my hurt, my pain, my frustration, my fatigue, if you really want me to talk to you about it and if you really want to listen, I hope maybe that you won't respond in a sort of mirror-like fashion and say, well, I'm tired too and I'm fatigued too. Yeah. I feel like having a conversation means that you listen and you respond and that different words come out of your mouth that I can then respond to and that we then engage proactively and constructively to sort this mess out because it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a long, long time. But if we don't listen to each other, I don't know how far we're going to get listening actively listening which means taking in and absorbing with your mind your body and your spirit what someone is saying not just going oh yeah i hear you i hear you no 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 don't don't rebuff me like that please do you know what i mean yeah it's it's a deeper sense of listening and i think that's going to hurt a lot of people it's going to be difficult but we have to face it, it is a difficult scenario that we're in yeah and a lot of us have been facing difficulties for a very long time. So accept that, accept that that is a truth and get involved is what what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah, one of our like guiding principles at at Content is Queen is, you know, inclusion is a process Mm. and your participation is necessary. And so we can't not engage. Yeah, we just can't, can't avoid it. Like eventually we have to engage in this. And I can understand why some people, you know, I've... I've been in places where I've wanted to take the the positive baton. You know, let's talk about it in this way. Let's talk about it. But it, sometimes it just doesn't doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> does not work doesn't. that way at all. So yeah, you can't kind of wish it away. It requires it's hard. the hard it's work. Hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I, I do want to get onto intergalactic. What made you say yes to this particular project? So with intergalactic, I had just finished a sci-fi. I was on a sci-fi at the time when I got the script and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a sci-fi. I can't do another sci-fi. Let me just read the script. So I read the script and this character, Tula Quick, comes and she's aggressive. She's rude. She's obnoxious. She's selfish. (laughs) She's all of these horrible things that I just went, well, of course I've got to try and play this character. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. I thought you were going to say no. (laughs) No, no, because I, you know, people have always seen, I'm, because of the, the projects that I've been well known for being in, I think there are quite a few that are quite vulnerable, kind mm. characters. And, I, you know, I get a lot of scripts which are just asking me to play that same type of character. So this was such a breath of fresh air to begin with. And then when I saw the complexities of that, she's got, Tula's got a daughter who is in the show with her and their da- mother-daughter dynamic is just... So, (laughs) it's so fragile and so messed up. It's not, it's a conversation that for me, it opens up many conversations and and I'm curious to to hear what audiences will make of them and it, the situations that they've been in and where Tula takes them and why. There are a lot of, it, it opens up a lot of questions about abuse about our backstory, about women being powerful, and what what they have to do in order to maintain that that status. And she was described as a narcissistic psychopath. Oh wow! Likened to both the Kray and Kray Kray twins. So I, I was like, that is okay. extreme. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, I want to do something with that. 
I want to do something with that. And Were there just, any and challenges you know, with that though? Because it's because it's such a different type of role to what you typically do play. Mm. Was that a challenge to then take on this very different way of being? I would argue that I don't typically play any one type of character. I think what's happened is that people sort of synonymous with certain types of characters because of what's been most popular, especially on screen. But if people have, for the audiences who've seen me on stage, I I do so many different types of characters. I, I choose step by decision I design that I don't take on the same thing okay. ever which is why it was so difficult for me to go from one sci-fi to another but I did it because of how powerful Tula is but yes I mean there's humor in it as well so although she's this tough cookie there's there's enough jokes as well you just be like I know people will be busting up at certain points it'd be interesting to see what audiences make of her and I think I would urge people to just stick to not make assumptions because with intergalactic itself the minute you make an assumption about any character it it gets flipped on its head oh right so, <laughs> one yeah, of those so, ones <laughs> oh yeah 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 so it's it i would say stick stick with it to see why she is the way she is yeah it's very interesting what are you working on improving right now i realized i'd been asleep for a really long time i, I had a few things that had happened in my past that really affected me and i i'd sort of been plodding along but in a sort of zombie like state i was functioning highly mm. you know working doing everything but there were elements of my mind that i'd just switched off and i wasn't engaged really in in very much at all and something happened to me three years ago that just it just ignited that spark within me I'm forever grateful for it from then on I just I slowly started to entice <laughs> entice the parts of myself that I had had been had disengaged back into into my myself my heart my my spirit and so I've been doing a lot of self-assessing and self-realization, which has been it's extraordinary what the human mind can do and how the human mind can sort of place things in safe corners until yeah. you're ready to access and address them. So that's I've been doing a lot of that. That's perfect. Thank you so much. I could have talked for longer, you know. <laughs> we could have gone on. I wouldn't have even minded. I've really been watching Sharon on TV throughout my life and it was an honour to learn more about the woman behind all of the characters I've watched. You can catch Sharon on Sky One's Intergalactic from the 30th of April. Follow her on Instagram at ShazDB to learn more about her work and just, you know, support her when she's doing these things. She's been in this industry for a minute, y'all. Like, she's been at this, so show her some love. Before we wrap up, here's comedian Don't Jealous Me with some must-hear advice that will bring out the child in you. The worst advice I was given was someone told me, oh, don't do stand-up comedy because if you do that and you fail, everyone, like, it's going to be like a really bad, you'll get really bad feedback and it's, it's something that's really hard, so just don't do it. That's something that's still affected me today, but I'm working on it. Don't worry. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this half an hour has made you think, reflect and contemplate what your next step should be. I'd like to encourage you to think about one person who would benefit from the messages that we've shared today. And I'd love for you to share this episode with them right now. If you'd like to hear the extended interview with Sharon, all you have to do is screenshot and share this episode to your Instagram stories and tag at content is queen HQ. It will basically let us know that it's worth doing the edit. So please do do that. Until next time. Bye. This is a content is queen production hosted by me, Imriel Morgan, edited by Joseph Perry, sound design by Amber Miller, Music and sound effects are from Epidemic Sound. See.